a very good afternoon to all of you. So let's move on from heart to brain. Uh, the topic is neurotherapeutics in Parkinson's disease. So I will be discussing the topic in uh, following subheadings, the introduction, what is Parkinson's disease, what are its clinical manifestations, and brief about its epidemiology, and subsequently, what are the newer symptomatic therapies, be it invasive or non-invasive in Parkinson's disease, and finally, if at all there are any disease-modifying therapies which has been developed or under in various phases of uh, uh, various phases or trials are present or not. So first of all, what is Parkinson? So it is a neurodegenerative condition characterized by loss of dopaminergic neurons in substantia nigra and is, uh, and is characterized by presence of Levi bodies. Levodopa is still considered the gold standard that controls the motor uh, deficits in early stages of the disease. However, the caveat is that once we start levodopa, after three to four years, the patient starts giving us symptoms which are not controllable with levodopa, which is the conventional and most widely spread treatment which is being used in Parkinson's disease. So the Parkinson's disease, it is a growing source of disability and mortality among neurological disorders. Ours is a 140 crore population uh, country. And accounting to uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, accounts for around one crore population of ours uh, uh, is, suspect, is uh, suffering from Parkinson's disease. And I'm talking about only idiopathic Parkinson's disease. I'm not talking about all other Parkinson's plus syndromes. So idiopathic Parkinson's disease accounts for around one crore of our population that is affected with IPD. So what are the stages of progression? The first stage is preclinical PD. The patient doesn't present because the symptoms are very minute, also known as honeymoon period and sec subsequently, which is followed by early stable period in which the symptoms are dramatically responsive to uh, levodopa or the conventional uh, therapies. And finally, the clinical PD, where we see all kinds of fluctuations, motor fluctuations, gait abnormalities, psychiatric manifestations, cognitive disturbances, and where our clinical practice, clinical judgment, and newer therapies come into place. So a brief about major non-motor and motor manifestations of PD. We always know there are the three cardinal manifestations, resting tremor, bradykinesias, and rigidity. This is the cardinal three pillars of Parkinson's disease. According to the latest guidelines, bradykinesia and rigidity are more important than tremor. We divide Parkinson into two, a tremor predominant IPD and a rigidity predominant IPD. So bradykinesia is is a must for a person to be diagnosed as having uh, Parkinson's disease. Tremor may or may not be there. And other non-motor symptoms are like hyposmia, fatigue, depression, and constipation. Late, later on, as the disease progresses, I've already to, uh, told you the symptoms develop in form of psychiatric ma manifestations, autonomic disturbances, and finally, a stage of cognitive impairment also. So what are the what are the caveats or what are the issues which we are daily facing with levodopa? The classical syndopa preparations or LCD preparations which we are using. It has a irregular gastric emptying time, a variable jejunal absorption, and it competes with dietary amino acids and has a ir irregular absorption and an extensive first pass metabolism and has a very short half-life. So what these all the issues lead to? They lead to these, these side effects. It leads to early wearing off. Wearing off means that as the drug is having a very short half-life, we need to give the levodopa preparations in more frequent dosages, delayed on. So before going further, I in Parkinson we always call on and off period. So what is on? On is when the person is responding to drugs, the symptoms are dramatically controlled with uh, levodopa preparations. And off phase is when the person is not responding to drugs or the medications, and if we are giving the medication also, the patient is still not responding to medication. So if because of ga delayed gastric emptying, uh, in decreased intestinal absorption, the effect of the symptomatic improvement with levodopa is not seen, that is known as delayed on. And finally, a dose failure. We are giving levodopa, but the, side, uh, the symptoms are not getting improved because of uh, abnormalities in gastric emptying, blood being barrier, transport defi deficits. So this is the protocol or this is the chart which we are daily following in our treatment, uh, uh, treatment guidelines. Initially, we used to treat with levodopa, dopamine agonists, and myob inhibitors. And when tremor predominant disease, we sometimes use with pacetine or uh, tihexyphenidyl and propanolol. However, what, 
what's the need of the R? The need of the R to have a, is to have a drug that have a better absorption, a better a bioavailability, and should be a longer acting and with better modes of delivery system and should be and should be and should be cost effective in our scenarios. So these are the latest many, uh, newer formulations which has come into our market. Few are being uh, are available and few are not. They are in the various phases of development. So I will be discussing the in subsequent slides which are being available in our uh, in, in in India or which are not. So first of all, coming to Ritri. So Ritri is levodopa carvedopa microbead preparation, which is oral longer acting and immediate extended release. Helps in which it helps in giving fewer uh, uh, dosages and increases the interval gap between the uh, treatment. And the adverse effects are similar to the conventional levodopa carbidopa preparation, and the side effects are almost similar. So the trials have shown that these rightly preparation or microbead preparation reduces the on uh, reduces the on uh, reduces the off period by additional one to two hours, and it increases the mean on time by around one to one point two hours. Less next is transcutaneous levodopa. It's not available in our market. It's US. It is available in US and has been FDA approved. This, as the skin is has a poor penetration to polar drugs like levodopa, with the use of ethanol and methanol, we can uh, we can deliver levodopa from our skin to our blood. So, this is in this uh, diagram you can see uh, see that. Uh, uh, it's type of patch device which we can apply on our skin and helps in deliver it helps in delivering levodopa and carvedopa to our bloods blood level uh, blood and this helps in maintaining a continuous uh, dose or uh, having a steady effect on our uh, 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 symptomatic uh, uh, on our symptoms studies have also shown that it also increases the on time and decreases the off time next is inhalational levodopa also known as Inbriza. It was approved by FDA in 2018. It is an oral inhalation powder consisting of large porous particles. And it is approved for the treatment of all periods in, in conjunction with levodopa and carvedopa preparation. It comes in a small pocket size breath accurated inhaler and helps in rapid attainment of plasma concentrations and can be self-administered by patients. Next is apomorphine. This has come to uh, our country around four years, four to five years back, uh, back. It's a potent dopamine receptor agonist, high, has a high affinity for D2, D3, and D4 receptors, and good activity on D1 receptors. You can see in this uh, figure, it, it, it comes in a pump, which can be placed in the patient's pocket, and it delivers the drug through skin to the blood. So it, it, it helps in increasing the uh, increasing the on time, decreasing the motor fluctuations, and in decreasing the fascination gate and the gate abnormalities which the Parkinson's disease patients suffer in mid to late stages. The only issue is cost. P uh, p uh, in our country, the patients uh, used to get these uh, pumps on rental basis, which cost around one to two lakh per month for on rental. The drug is uh, the drug which these pump deliver is so uh, is cheap cheaper. Next is safinamide. It has been approved by FDA in 2017, oral reversible MAO B inhibitor. It, this I use you, uh, use in mid to late stage Parkinson's disease come in 50 to or 100 milligram tablets. The main side effect is in patients with hepatic dysfunction, we cannot use it. And most common uh, adverse effect is mild to moderate dyskinesias. However, once the person lands up in late stages, he is not that much worried about his dyskinesias. He just want to get relief of his bloody kinesia. So in, this, in those late stages, we, this drug is being used in our practice in, uh, for the last three to four years. We all knows, know about COMT inhibitors, classical uh, COMT inhibitors like Antecapone and Tolcapone. Recently into market, Opicapone, a new drug has come. It has uh, uh, the major advantage of uh, Opicapone over Antecapone and tal uh, Tolcapone. It has a longer half-life because of its longer duration, long, high binding aff affinity. And it helps in uh, the side effects of Antecapone are comparatively less as compared to uh, opicapone. The major side effects are impulse control disorders with these uh, COMT inhibitors, which are comparatively less in opicapone patients as compared to antecapone and tolcapone. 
the trials have also shown that it has caused a significant reduction in off time and has uh, with and has an increase in on time and also has shown that it helps in decre uh, decreasing the uh, dyskinesias, which are the major side effects with levodopa, carbidopa per patients. Next is estradiphylin. It was approved by FDA in 2019, just selective adenosine A2 receptor antagonist, and has it blocks, it helps in decreasing the excessive activation of indirect pathway. One should know that uh, this uh, negrostriatal pathway has th three pathways one is direct, one is indirect, one is hyperdirect. So these all pathways contributes to the pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease. So this estradiphylin drug, which is an adenosine A2 receptor antagonist, it decreases the excessive activation of indirect pathway and ultimately decreases the, decreases the bradykinesia part of Parkinson's disease. Uh, this uh, drug has also shown to be effective in uh, overactive bladder and daytime sleepiness. We all know that ultimately it's all Parkinson patients experience psychotic manifestations like visual hallucinations, paranoid delusions. We always use atypical antipsychotics or other drugs along with uh, anti-Parkinson drugs. However, recently Pima, Vansari, uh, Pima Vanserin has come into our market. I think within one to two months it will be available with us. It is a selective inverse agonist as at 5H2A receptor and has a 40, 40-fold higher infinity for 5H2A receptors. And the, it comes in a dosage of 34 milligram. Now moving on to invasive symptomatic therapies. In all these therapy, in all these uh, invasive therapies, almost all of them are available in our country. Uh, first is Ludopa intestinal gel. It was approved by FDA in 2015. It comes in an aqueous carboxymethyl cellulose gel suspension and it is administered with a programmable infusion pump. The, uh, the tube or the delivery system is uh, uh, attached to the jejunum through percutaneous transgastric endoscopic gastrojejunostomy, which we also know as PEG. Uh, PEG. And it, it, is, it can be used for at, as long as 10 to 12 years. It is indicated for patients who are experiencing significant off periods despite giving maximum tolerable doses of levodopa and symptoms are mainly still, uh, when the symptoms are mainly still levodopa responsive. So the studies have shown that it has reduced significant uh, off periods and, and increased significant on periods in Parkinson's disease. Gloria registry has also demonstrated the same that it has effective, it is far more effective than levodopa, carbidopa conventional preparation. Moving on to MRI guided focus ultrasound. So in this, with the help of ultrasound, we, gi uh, we give a diathermy to the uh, nucleuses of basal ganglia, which contributes to the symptoms of pa uh, Parkinson's disease. In, uh, this, it has three stages, sonication, temporary effect, and ablation stage. I will not go into the details of these. So. The targets of this MRI guided ultrasound therapy is we ablate or we give a diathermy to these nucleuses and decreases their activation. For example, ventral intermediate nucleus of thalamus, if it is ablated through this technique, it will help in reducing the tremor predominant stage of uh, tremors in Parkinson's disease. Subthalamic nucleus, uh, if it is uh, ablated, it can help in reducing rigidity echinacea and tremors, and GPI, if it is ablated, it can result in decreasing rigidity, echinacea, tremors. However, what are the limitations of this? Because, because the targets are different, we sometimes might be confused that which target is to be utilized for page symptomatic relief, because one target will help in giving a relief of particular symptom, not all the symptoms. And sometimes we have to give high temperatures and repeated ablations to a particular nucleus once the symptoms wean off. Moving on to deep brain stimulation, the talk of the town. The deep brain stimulation is an effective therapeutic tool for Parkinson's disease with troublesome motor fluctuations and dyskinesias reflected to best medical therapy. It is approved for PD tremors in 1997. For last 30 years, it is with us. However, only in last three to four years, it is being used for early PD. Previously, we were using it for only patients who are wearing advanced or mid-stage PD. Now this is being utilized for early PD. The only issues were that, that if we use it for early Parkinson's disease patients, we might miss the uh, patients who are not suffering from PD. For example, if a person is suspected to having PD, in next one to two years, he might turn on to be 
having a Parkinson plus like syndrome, for example, PSP, which is a close mimicker of IPD. So in that scenarios, we have to be vigilant that which person is to be chosen for uh, DBS and which is to be not. It, in this uh, stimulating electrodes are, are inserted into the brain with the help of a stereotactic frame and MRI and various nucleus which I've already mentioned, for example, ventral intermediate nucleus of thalamus, GPI, subthalamic nucleus, pedunculopontine nucleus can, uh, can be the locus for insertion of these leads, directional leads, and ultimately, this is in, uh, this is connected to a stimulator electrode like a pacemaker in cardiology. This in, this giving a particular uh, stimulations to the these nucleus and helping relieving the symptoms. What are the inclusion criteria for a person to be taken for uh, DBS? So first one should be uh, particularly convinced that person is having IPD and who he should be levodopa responsive. The exclusion criteria is I have already mentioned atypical Parkinson like PSA, MSA, CVGD and those having Parkinson disease, dementia, and severe depression or psychosis. In our clinical practice, all the patients who has a significant improvement in UPDRS score or in simple language motor complications of Parkinson disease, more than 40% with levodopa, we always think of uh, giving the patient advantage or giving an uh, option of DBS to these patients. DBS can be done both in sleep and uh, awake stages. However, the uh, advantages of sleep is more as compared to awake. The DBS of, is of two types, closed loop and open loop. Closed loop is when the, uh, it, uh, closed loop is when the, when the patient can stimulate or when the uh, patient himself can uh, stimulate his sub in various nucleuses according to the symptom profile. Open loop is like the after three to five months, the doctor has to uh, modify the stimulation or the pacemaker according to the patient's symptom progression or his response to the DBS. Now moving on to disease modifying therapies. I've already told you that this is all is symptomatic therapy. So have we got any drugs which can retard the progression of disease or which can eliminate the disease? So we know that this disease is because of accumulation of alpha synuclein protein. So if we can decrease the production of alpha synuclein protein, we can retard the progression of disease. So this can be done with various, uh, various trials have are underwent. For example, if we can, at the genetic level, we can introduce uh, RNA molecules to trigger the synthetic post-transcription silencing of alpha synuclein gene, we can decrease the production of alpha synuclein protein and ultimately the formation of Levi bodies. Vaccines have already also been uh, also in various trials of development and also uh, various smartphone apps have also allowed the neurologist to go beyond clinical assessments for Parkinson's disease for consultation and and deciding upon which dose is effective. Little bit about genes, various genes are available, genetic genes are involved in Parkinson's disease pathogenesis. So this is, uh, today is the time of precision medicine and precision neurology. So various trials are being underwent who, who that decides that are you, that are being utilizing the gene targets and the products of these uh, genes for developing drugs which can retard the progression or halt the progression of this disease. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Vikas, for giving us a real insight what are the newer therapies in Parkinson's disease. Because when we were students, only alpha methyl dopa and you can say the other drugs were there just to control the symptoms. Thank you very much for apprising us what is new and we may be able to modify the disease process rather than treating it symptomatically. Thank you very much. Now I'll invite Dr. Jigi